There are four seniors, there are 21 masters, and there are 24 women, 163 open players, total 212 competitors. Welcome to Charlotte. Yeah. The 86 Worlds was significant. I was traveling with Alan Bieber and Russell Swartz to the 1985 Worlds in Oklahoma. At that tournament, at that time, an old school method of scorekeeping was used where they just laid out a matrix on a poster board and it was difficult, unorganized. We all went to bed that Friday night thinking some players were gonna play in the finals the next day and some players were not. And when we got up the next morning, they had made corrections, found mistakes, and people missed tea times. People showed up at the course that weren't supposed to be there. The tournament kind of fell into a disarray. Alan and myself and Russell were inspired at that time to run the world championships in Charlotte and demonstrate that it could be done better. Anytime you have an event in the scale of the world championships and you have the talent and the, the volunteer spirit and the courage to do so as they do in Charlotte, people sit up and notice. Suddenly, disc golf had credibility, not only in North Carolina, but in the South. And it proved that we had a little bit of economic clout when you got 300 folks coming to your town to get hotels and eat pizza. It was a step towards legitimacy. It all started out that Russell was going to be the tournament director, Alan was going to be the parks liaison, and I was going to handle the scorekeeping issue. Russell ran into a difficult year leading into that, and at some point he called us all together and said, I can't do it. I cannot run the world championships. I've got too much on my plate. We had a conference call with Ted Smethers, the commissioner at the time, and we explained to Ted that Russell was not able to do it. He was pretty, pretty concerned. And I stepped in and said, I will do it. I will run the world. I want to say with a tongue in cheek, I saved the world, <laughs> if you will. But at the time, I had created a scorekeeping system that did several things that I thought extremely important. It made the scorekeeping process transparent. It made it very public. There was a public display of who was where on the standings, and it was easily sorted. I borrowed an idea from a man named Jim Paul Mary, and I borrowed an idea from Russell when he talked about a time card rack, and I created the leaderboard. I invented the scorekeeping system, which is still in use today. And I'm surprised that with all the modern technology, the internet, cell phones, that something has not taken its place, but it still works. It still gives a public display. And you've seen them if you've ever played in a tournament. Well, I invented the thing. In general, the courses on the East Coast are tighter and more wooded than a lot of the courses as you go further west. Speaking specifically the 86 Worlds, I think they did a great job not having a lot of really tight courses involved. In Ladder Park, which is, unfortunately is no longer extant, it was just a fabulous course. Russell Schwartz and I used to call it a disc golf cathedral, just giant old oaks playing under this beautiful canopy, you know, nice creek running through it conveniently at the bottom of the ravine, so everything rolled OB. And then they used Hornet's Nest, which was a temporary course, not like the Hornet's Nest that's there now, but that had some tight holes on it because you have a tendency to stick with what brung you. But there was a good mix in Charlotte, and Charlotte's always done a great job with their events, and 1986 was no exception. We didn't have a permanent golf course. We had three parks and we pulled in 54 portable targets. We had a pretty significant effort in just putting up targets and taking targets down every day. Since only Lada was the only permanent course then, the PDJ would bring in someone to design the world's courses. Without Alan Beaver 
we would not have had the 86 Worlds. He was the lead course designer. He laid out every golf course. He was instrumental in the competition venues. He didn't address the public so much, but his work was present. The Charlotte Worlds was actually one of the smallest ones that had the smallest payout, smallest number of players. And we almost lost it and had to pull it together kind of at the last minute. We did pull it off. Yes, it brought a lot of credibility to North Carolina, but it was regarded as one of the smaller worlds, unlike when we brought it back in 1997 to be the best worlds ever, and at that time, it was.